welcome back to my channel. I have a little bit of a different setup today and I really like it. I don't know where I am. I am sat on my sofa in my living room. I really hope you're not wonky. I feel like you might be a tiny bit. I feel like that's a tiny bit better. You probably didn't really notice. But yeah, I am going to be doing a Q&A today and I just wanted it to be really chilled and just like a girly chatty video so yeah i thought i'd just sit on the sofa i have made myself a cup of coffee and i also have a big bowl of popcorn here that's the vibes i wanted to go with for this video snacks coffee perfect grab your snacks of course i've got sweet and salt because it's the best flavor and the coffee i've got is just an instant coffee because i've had like a full-on coffee machine coffee already today yeah i just thought we'd do a q a because we've not done one in a while and i asked on instagram like last week i think if you had any questions and i was going to film it last week but i ended up not feeling very well so i didn't upload and then i did two videos at the weekend and i was actually going to do some questions in the makeup video but i was trying out new products and there was just a lot going on like me seeing if I liked the makeup and then trying to answer questions and I felt like it was just too much for a video. And I need to find the questions now because I asked them so long ago. <clears throat> okay, first question. Oh my God, guys, I get so many questions still on where my watch strap is from. Um, this is my Apple watch and the strap is like, kind of looks like a legit like watch. Not that this isn't, but if you know what I mean, it doesn't look like an exercise watch and I link it so many times on Instagram, but I'll do it in this video as well, just in case you've missed it, um, because I honestly get like, so many questions every single day about that. Um, so, how long do you expect to live in your first home before buying your next one? So, I have lived in my flat now for over a year. I think coming up to like, I moved in February, March, April, May. <laughs> Last time when I counted this on my home Instagram, I missed out a month somehow. We're in May. So yeah, sorry, a year and three months I've lived here, which I don't know where that time's gone. Honestly, it's true. As you get older, every single year just goes quicker and quicker and quicker. We're almost in June. Like, what? In my head, I always knew that I wanted to stay here for at least a couple of years before moving on. And I still feel like I am like I will be ready to maybe next year because I love my flat so, so much. And like no matter when the time comes to leave, I'll be so sad to leave it because I just have so many memories here. I feel like I've really become so independent since moving out on my own. And I do love my own company. Like I am here a lot of the time on my own. And yeah, it will be one of those places and times in my life that I really will cherish forever. I'm so grateful that I have been lucky enough to live on my own. Yeah, it's not gonna be any time like soon, but I think probably next year, I think it'll be on the cards to move. Um, I think naturally you do outgrow a space. And like I said, as much as I still love living here, I can see myself like, wanting a bigger space or wanting a different space when i moved i knew it wasn't going to be for like years and years and years because i actually took out like a two-year fixed mortgage i think two years yeah i think next year i'll probably move out scary i'm gonna be 26 next year oh my god also another question is the best thing about living where you live one thing that i love is that i can walk everywhere pretty much like i can walk anywhere that i need to go like the other day i had to um drop my car off um to the garage to get an mot and i came back i didn't feel like tied down or trapped in my home because i can go anywhere like i have a town right at my fingertips is that how you say it i don't know um yeah i'm like 10 minutes maybe five no i'd say 10 minute walk into the middle of the town which is just so perfect and i'm so glad I have that um and it's like supermarkets clothes shops or quirky shops so many coffee shops everything i need there's like a cute little market twice a week there's a park there's my gym there's a cinema like there's so much stuff that i have like right in front of me and it's really nice to like socialize 
with friends and do like dates and stuff like that. Um, because there is so much around me and I'm so glad it's so close because I never had that at my parents' house. Like I just didn't really know any different. And now I have it. I really want to keep that when I move, especially whilst I'm young. I think it's so nice to just be able to walk outside and walk somewhere that's not too, too far. That is probably the best thing about where I live. The view as well, I have a beautiful view and that's another thing I'm so lucky for. Yeah, I feel, I feel like those are the best things. The next thing that I definitely will consider in my next place as well, I feel like I'm just rambling about moving, um, is sunlight. I only get the sunlight for about three hours, which is in the morning. Um, I mean, I'd probably get it longer, but I'm asleep most of the time. So I only get it till like 11. Then, like the flat is really warm, but I would like some more natural light. There's a lot of light, but not sunlight. And that is something that I will want to make sure I have in my next place. So yeah. Okay, if you want to come down with me, what would your three courses be? Okay, this is a bit of me, this question. Um, oh God, I, oh, I have so many favorite dinners. So on Valentine's, I actually cooked a three course meal for my boyfriend. I sort of did like his favorite stuff, but also mine. Um, we do have like some of the, some of our favorite foods in common. The starter that I made, I'll try and find some photos, was so good. It was like a Spanish style, pill pill prawns, garlic with oil and some garlic bread. That was so, so good. So I'd probably make something like that, like tapas, maybe with some different styles. I guess that's cheating because that's loads of starters, but I do love like picky bit starters. And then for main, I'm trying to think what I am best at cooking, but I feel like what I'm best at cooking is not what I'd cook for somebody else. Like I make a really good chili, a really good spaghetti bolognese, but I'd want to like push the boat out I am gonna make a mistake, but I probably wouldn't do that. God, this is hard. I'm gonna actually have to look through my camera roll and see what I've made recently because I actually can't think. So I made this really nice dish in lockdown, which was like stuffed chicken, kind of like what I make now, um, but it was a little bit different with like Hasselback potatoes. I feel like that's quite fancy. I make a really good stir fry, a curry, some sort of chicken or maybe like, some sort of Asian food, like a curry or a stir fry. I know that's given too many answers, but I really can't choose. And then for dessert, I feel, feel like it'd be a cheesecake. I'm good at a cheesecake and it's my favorite dessert. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, someone has asked sort of like an agony art question, which has just made me think, maybe I can do some more videos sort of answering your dilemmas. I don't know. How long can I, how long should I stay in the talking stage before giving up? So I'm going to assume that this person means um, talking stage with a boy or a girl they've either not met. So I feel like, yeah, talking stage is, in my opinion, like before you date. So you're talking, you know, I feel like I'm gonna do two, two different answers, two scenarios. So the first would be all the talking before you even go out on a date. And then the second one would be like talking, dating, before you put labels on things. Personally, I think don't drag out talking before you meet someone because you might really like them over message, find out everything about them, and then either meet them and have nothing to talk about or meet them and think, oh my God, where's the vibe? Like, I thought I really liked the person. So I feel like that time could just be a waste. Um, I'd probably give it like a couple of weeks maximum, maybe a few weeks max. If it's like just sort of not taking like the plunge to ask, then yeah, I would be like, mm, are we ever gonna meet up? Like after a few weeks, I probably would just be like, he doesn't seem interested. Going on to the second option of talk him, date him, and not knowing like where you stand in a relationship. After a few months, there's no need to rush into like being boyfriend and girlfriend, boyfriend and boyfriend, girlfriend and girlfriend, whatever it is. I don't see the massive Russian labels. I feel like I've just rambled and not really made sense, but I think a, few, a couple of weeks, a few weeks before you actually go on a date and meet, and then a few months before you'd be like, 
do you like me? <laughs> I'm, I'm a straight up person. Like, if you are just wondering in general, then just ask. Like, there's no point having your time wasted because you're worried that they might think you're being forward. Um, I actually think a lot of people would find that attractive. So I don't think there's any harm in being like, what are we waiting for in terms of meeting, in terms of labels? Like, yeah. And if they don't give you a direct answer, then I probably would be like, mm, you're a waste of time. Mm. This popcorn is so good. Okay, favorite city break destination. So I've done a few city breaks before. I definitely want to do more. Um, my mum and dad are actually in Venice as we speak and I really want to go to Venice. I really liked Barcelona, but I don't feel like I saw it as much as I would have liked to. Paris is a really good one. I can't think what other city breaks I've done actually. <laughs> have I been on any more city breaks? They'll probably come to me later, but... So I'd say Paris and Barcelona because I feel like they're the only two I've done. Okay, so the next question is... What sites or shops do you recommend to buy furniture for or decorations for your flat? So I'm trying to think where I got a lot of my stuff from. My sofa is from West Elm, but I haven't got anything else from there. Um, I've got a lot of stuff from Ikea, obviously, like the place to go for homeware. And it's pretty affordable, pretty good stuff. A lot of my furniture that I'm looking at is from Ikea. H&M Home. Primark home I actually went there today. My bed is from Arista Living. I think I have a 50% off code still with them, so I'll find out. And then if I do, I'll put it in the description box because I love that bed and it stores so much underneath. Wayfair, I got my um, dining table from Wayfair. Made, made.com, that's quite pricey though. Uh, my lamp is from Made. Desenio prints. Um, I'm literally looking around and thinking where have I got everything from. Dunelm, my lamps are from Dunelm in my bedroom. I feel like to shop around. The annoying thing with Primark is that you have to go to a good one to get a good home and to get like good homeware. Don't have a website, which is really annoying. But H&M Home, oh Zara Home. How could I forget Zara Home? I actually am convinced that soon enough, Zara, Primark, H&M will be selling things like sofas. So yeah. Shopping for your home is fun. Home sense. Sorry, but how did I forget Home Sense? I love Home Sense. Home Sense is my favourite shop. The range as well. Oh my god, I remember in so many, so many places. BM. BM is great. And so is Home Sense. Favourite TV series. I'm really boring. Um, I'm much more of a film girl. I'm not one of the people that keeps up with netflix series um oh dropping popcorn everywhere everyone talks about selling sunset my sisters both watch it i just can't get into that sort of thing i really like keeping up with kardashians actually the new series is filmed so well but apart from that the best series that i've watched money heist for sure you have to watch it in spanish with the english subtitles took me a while to get into it once i was into it oh my god it is so good um, I cried at the end. I like Squid Game, but yeah, I'm more of like a documentary or like a film girl. Okay, I'm going to do one more question. I can't tell if I've been talking for ages or not. <laughs> the last question that I always, always get asked, I don't think I've mentioned before, is how did you and your boyfriend meet? We actually met on a dating app in 2022. We actually met in 2020. We met on Hinge and... I've been on, I was going to say loads, I've been on a few dating apps before that. And Hinge is honestly the best one. So if you're someone who doesn't like dating apps, try Hinge because I feel like it's not as cringy and it's actually more like things to do on there. Like not games or anything, but it's more of like a profile instead of just looking at a picture. Like you, you write things about yourself and each to their own. I went on Tinder for about a day and I hated it. Um, Bumble was okay and I think that's the only ones I've been on. I was only on Hinge for like a day before I matched with my boyfriend. Um, and he'll probably hate me for saying that, but it's nothing to be embarrassed about. I think when we both met, we were like, oh, we're gonna have to tell people we met on a dating app. Shall we make up a lie? In all seriousness, it's nothing to be ashamed of, obviously. It's how a lot of people in our generation meet. And we actually met like the week before lockdown. <laughs> so, 
we dated in like a really old fashioned way actually, which I really liked. We went on a lot of walks and like we really just like got to know each other before going on like actual dates and going to each other's houses and stuff. If you were interested, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people aren't anymore, but I feel like dating apps definitely had like a bit of stigma and people were a bit embarrassed to say that they were on them. But first of all, I always thought I was gonna meet like a weirdo on a dating app, but then I thought, well, I'm on one. So there must be some other normal people on them too. Turns out there is. So um, yeah, I know loads of people that met their boyfriends or their partners on apps. If you're worried about it, just go for it because what have we got to lose? Just be careful with them and always go on a date in a public place. Now I have rambled for ages. I'm gonna end this video here. I love this style of just laying on the sofa, not laying, but sitting on the sofa and just having like a catch up with you, eating popcorn. And I really like the idea of listening to your problems and dilemmas and trying to give some advice if you guys are interested in that video please let me know and i will definitely do it but yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video